Good evening everyone, my name is Edgar, and this is MissCon. Tonight, we have a very special show for you and a very special guest in the studio. It's Cardia. Welcome, Cardia. Hey guys, I'm glad to be here. We're doing some fun stuff tonight. We're doing top 10 scariest vintage photos. Nice. Yeah, I just got this list today and I really haven't looked closely at the images, so we're going to do this together and we're trying a different format, so bear with us if it is a little weird. Or if you love it, let us know. Comment below. Mm. Don't forget to subscribe and like because we really like that. So yeah. let's get on the first picture. What do we have? All right, so we've got number one. At the beginning of the 20th century, a new movement called the Spiritualist Movement started making the rounds, and photography like this became very popular. This image is of a couple who had lost a loved one and wanted to see them again, so they employed a famous paranormal investigator of the time named William Hope. He took this supposed image of the couple and their dead relative as proof that she was still around. So, what do you think? I'm curious about if they gave them the, I, I mean, if the couple gave the photographer the image exactly like that of their dead relative, or he somehow edited it with that shawl, you know? Hmm. Let's see. Yeah, I mean, it could certainly be two images superimposed on each other, or I don't know. Could that be done at she the time? Was lurking. I think so. Yeah, huh. they could. Uh, yeah, they they could put stuff together by that point. Either this guy was a really good swindler, or wow. Yeah, I mean, was it meant to be paranormal, or right. or was it just meant to? He's like, look, I can. You know, I can copy and paste this girl into your picture. I really except, think it was supposed to be paranormal, like, because he was a paranormal investigator. Like, he tried to contact their dead loved ones, you know? Yeah, that does make sense. Hmm. All right, what's our next one? Let's go. All right, so here we have number two. This is Susan and John Buckley two children who decided to prove that they had killed their mother by hacking her head off by taking this image. They were long gone before anyone knew she was dead, and this was the only proof of the heinous crime they committed. If that was true, this would have been a really creepy picture. Fortunately though, this is quite a popular fakeout that was recently manipulated for shock value. And here is the actual original image of the Buckley family with all the heads attached. Oh, do How we... do I go to the next photo? I can edit this out now. Ta-da! And this is a really ancient hoax. That's interesting. You know how I noticed this was a hoax though from the first picture? It took me a second, but look at the neck wound. Look how yeah. clean that is. And it actually looks like a modern, you know, like someone did this in GIMP. Yeah. <laughs> it's really good, though, I mean, for an amateur. Also, I wouldn't mind seeing a series of old images, but, you know, hacked up with GIMP to make them creepy. So we could totally do this entire thing like that. Yeah, that's true. Maybe that could be another episode. <laughs> Top 10 creepy pictures we made from totally innocent pictures. Tell us if you guys like that. Comment below. Yeah. Alright, so what's our next one? Number three. Uh, there is no history on this image, but I am assuming this man was a marionette maker displaying his craft which makes for a quite creepy photo because of the looks of their vintage faces. Or maybe it's something more sinister. Oh, what do you guys think? It is... It is... You were reading that as I was staring unsettling. at the faces and it creeped me out. Yeah. 
It, it is a little unsettling. It's also the fact that they're staring right at you while the, assumingly the marionette maker is staring somewhere off in the distance. <laughs> <laughs> now, and these, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm wondering, yeah, I mean, are they, are they dolls or did he put masks on people? Are they standing up straight? How are they? Oh, I don't know. It's very unsettling. I don't like this picture. Huh. I mean, the the shorter uh, male figure in the front certainly looks like it could be a doll for sure, but mm -hmm. the the taller one could just be somebody with a mask. And it looks know. like he had his hands open to hold them up. The t <laughs> at least the two tall ones. The little girl uh. looks like she's sitting down somewhere. So I guess the boy, if he had, maybe there's a stick somehow. Holding him up? I don't know. I'm just thinking, yeah, creepy. Marionette or dolls? Creepy Very doll creepy. maker <laughs> picture. But... Alright, what's our next one? Speaking of creepy dolls, here is a vintage photo of ladies painting the features of dolls' faces. What's particularly creepy is all the bodiless heads in the background on the shelves. Yeah, that is creepy. <laughs> yeah, certainly in general, it is just a kind of creepy vibe of heads everywhere. I wonder if these women have nightmares when they go back home. <laughs> of giant faces. Oh, God, I can't. Yeah, really? You're I think playing. the black and white does a lot to it, too. If you ever play a video game and then when you go out into the world, you know, you've played too much, all you see is, you know, the, the boxes to pick up or the, the scores and you know, they must go home and see babies everywhere. <laughs> baby heads. Baby heads. Just baby heads. Because it looks, if you look in the background, there's no arms or legs, yeah, just heads. They're very focused. <laughs> all right, number five. In 1890, in one of Germany's many mental institutions, this was considered a legitimate treatment for certain conditions. This was called forced standing and would have the person forced to stand up for hours in this position while locked in place by chains and cuffs. Oh, that is just terrible. Does it look like she has chains on her ankles too? Hmm. Yeah. Look, there's so a little loop on the spread bottom. The, so she can't move her legs outward to change any of the she can't even forces involved. The muscle spasm she must be experiencing. Now, I, oh. I know in modern times, uh, forced standing and, and sleep deprivation um, are, you know, torture tactics used even even now. So forcing someone to stand for long periods of time is not not good. I wouldn't want to see the other side of that picture with her face. Oh my gosh. Oh, uh, that's true. It mm -hmm. must be a very unhappy face. Oh, that's, that's, yeah, that's pretty creepy. I'm mm -hmm. glad I was not stuck in that place because something tells me they might think there's something a bit nutty about old Edgar. <laughs> <laughs> ah, number six. Oh, I'm going to apologize ahead of time for the mispronunciation. Uh, Guilam Benjamin Amand Duchesne de Bologna was a French neurologist who greatly advanced the field of electrophysiology. This is him studying the effects of electric stimulation on facial muscles. And it, it they just picked looks ghastly. Such an, a great image. To showcase that that is just are those electrodes on his neck too oh it must be your grounding wires perhaps he does not look happy so I'm, I'm wondering though do we do we have any info is this was this voluntary or was this guy captured or? no no this guy was a patient he uh. actually had many patients and he from what I know was working on somebody else's already done science mm. and he was popular at the time so many people came to him volunteering to be <laughs> to be zapped like that i don't <laughs> i don't think well, that's painful though i mean I, I think for me any involuntary movements out of my control i always feel a bit creepy so you know uh, when they do that rubber mallet at the painful. doctor's office where they hit your knee. Yeah. I'm hoping it's kind of like that and not painful for this guy because that does not look good. 
Oh man, yes, he does look aghast. Alright, number seven. Wow. So, let's see. This is Catherine Detzel. She was a mental patient in the Heidelberg Psychiatric Clinic who got lonely in her mental hospital. So she built herself a man by using her sewing skills and out of materials like straw from her bed. Oh, well, I think that's very creative, and I'm sorry that she was so lonely. I think that the woman that got locked up in a mental institution for having some kind of a political opinion that was not, um, not understood by many or not understood by the right people. Yeah, I think I could be completely wrong. I don't recognize her name, so I'm not certain. I think I've seen her in a video somewhere. Um, oh, I can't remember the full story, but she also made miniature figurines and she gave them to people at the mental institution out mm -hmm. of, like, parts of hair. <laughs> I don't know. Well, so she's a little creepy, she's, but she seems good-hearted. That face on... Hold on. With a face or, you know... Look at that. That's made out of the straw from the bed. So creepy. It is creepy. And when I first saw the image, my, my first thought was that she stuffed her husband. Oh, oh. <laughs> but it turns and her husband would have really short arms. Yeah, well, maybe she wasn't that great at the taxidermy. <laughs> Number eight. Why are the parents' faces blurry? but the daughter's face quite clear. It's because back in the days of this photo, people would have to sit still for a very long time while the photo image was developed. They had to make sure not to move, otherwise the image would be blurry. Well, people who are alive, at least, need to breathe, so obviously there would be some blurring throughout the photography process. But why is the daughter's face so clear? Well, it's because she's not alive. It was also popular in those days to take a photo with your dead relative to remember them before burying them. Well, that's interesting. So she got the best exposure by being the least mobile. You tell the mom's face so sad. Well, uh, also, I know that in older photos, because they had to sit still for so long, they couldn't smiling, smile. Smiling wasn't a thing. Yeah. yeah. Um, they had to try and take a relaxed position. So even when it's not a funeral uh, or death-related image, you generally see them all very sullen-faced because they cannot smile for that yeah. long. The I think the dad's staring right at the photographer, at least, but the mom's just staring somewhere off in the distance, too, you know? Yeah, actually, the mom and the daughter seem to both be looking at something. That's I wonder really what's weird. going on there. Yeah. Hmm. Well, I wonder if anyone will take pictures of me after I'm gone. That's so creepy. <laughs> <laughs> Number nine. Wow. Now, we don't have a lot of information on this image. Uh, either this is a very well handcrafted doll, or quite a clear image of a very shy alien. Uh, anyone that can get some information on this, you know, you definitely leave a comment below to help us out. Um, I mean, I'm even thinking I, it looks like a mummified body. That's what I was just going to say because of the chest, the way the yeah. cavity looks kind of... Like she maybe dug up a relative or something, but... Oh, right. The, but I mean, Look it the... looks like the upper torso is very fabric-y. I don't know if that is something... Yeah. Uh, can we zoom in on that? You know, or is it, I guess it could be skin. It could I be guess, the I guess. chest deflated in a mummification process. And But here, obviously, for the, if this was a mummified person, this had to be put on after because it is way too clean Yeah. and hasn't been around. And, and, and assuming cut, these legs. Those are wood. Uh, I mean, they, they looked like wood to me anyway. Mm. And very uneven leg wood. And she looks like a seamstress, the woman. You know, like she's, she seems like maybe this is what she does for a living. Makes mummified clothing for... <laughs> oh, yeah. Wait, clothing for mummified 
people? I don't know. <laughs> it's all the rage. I can't wait to see the history on this and find out. Well, and another thing about this image is it leaves me with the feeling that, the, I mean, this is just one frame. I feel like the zombie uh, character is looking down, and I feel like as soon as the image was stopped, she was, like, in motion, looked back up. Like, she's looking at something on the ground right now. And I definitely, yeah, I don't know. I don't know, she kind of looks shy to me. She's about to, to spring me. into action. Like, <laughs> So you see spring into action. I see like completely shy, like she doesn't want the picture taken. Yeah. And we're calling her a she because of the skirt, but. Yes, I definitely automatically felt a feminine vibe. Yeah. I think it's the whole shoulders up thing too, you know. And I want to know the history on the other woman, the alive person. Or the doll. I don't know what that is now. Well, what do we have back I don't know, a bridge? A bridge, that's what I see. A bridge, some trees. Can't really get it centered, but... Hmm. Lovely landscape. But yes, the mystery of the mummified girl. Number 10. In 1968... Oh, what is our number 10? Going there now, sorry about that. Number 10. In 1968... Author Robert A. Ferguson was speaking about his new book, Psychic Telemetry, A New Key to Health, Wealth, and Perfect Living. This Polaroid was taken in the middle of that speech. So, presumably, the, the questionable part of the photo is this double image over here next to the guy speaking, and it doesn't really look like him. You know why it doesn't look like him to you? It's because his whole face is shifted in the uh, blurry image. He's smiling, so everything is shifted up a little bit. But if you really look, it is him. Interesting. I was trying to match something obvious like the tie, you know, but... It looks like it's shifted image and on an angle. It's not like directly to his le right, left. But is the ghostly image even wearing the same outfit? It's hard to say. Mm. And he's not. You if, know, you, the if you look at the shoulder blades aren't right. I was just gonna say, if you look at the angle of the ghostly image, is the side of his head in relation to the the angle of his shoulder mm -hmm. does not seem to match up. Also, he doesn't have gigantic ears. And also, his hairline is different. I just mm. realized. Look at the difference in the hairline. Yeah, this one. Well, I know, sort of. This one has a little, a little dip. The real guy has a dip. And the ghostly guy does not have that little dip. I'm wondering. In his hair. I don't know if you guys, I don't know what you guys see, but. I'm wondering if the dispute is about if it's him or if he actually, if it's a ghost. You know, that could be just. Not a shift of him, but a ghost, like his grandpa or, or something. Or, of you know course, I mean? it could just have been uh, some sort of ex double exposed film or, I don't hmm. know, some kind of error in the... Well, this was a... in the... <laughs> Please turn off cell phones before <laughs> recording. All right, anyway, so... I was going to say, this is a Polaroid, though. It, it, you ah. couldn't do double exposure with the Polaroid. Interesting. So that's, I think that's where the big... Yeah, I don't know. I'm not sure who's creeping up on him back there, but maybe it's another guy who did another speech sometime in the past. Well, that's uh, all the time we have for this week. Uh, but those were quite a number of interesting images, I think. I hope uh, you guys really like the new format if you guys did give us a thumbs up let us know comment below and definitely subscribe we'd like to see those numbers climb we're trying to reach a nice goal of 500 hmm. so. oh and we'll leave a link below uh, you uh, if you haven't already seen it you're going to want to check out our video from last halloween which by the way i almost forgot happy halloween everybody happy halloween well on that note my name is edgar and my name is Cardia. And this is Miscon. Have a creepy day. Bye.